Hello, travelers. I got my intake baffles done, right? There's one here, there's one over there, and behind there is a intake remover. So my intake air comes in here, comes across the rigs, goes out the exhaust. One of the issues I was having was, if you look at the height of this, this top section, it's above these racks, right? The rigs are down here, and these top few fans weren't doing a lot of work. They were pulling air out, of course, but it was just kind of bypassing the rigs, just going over top of them. And it was a lot colder up here than it was down here. It was hottest down here. It was a large gradient. Obviously not ideal because you're spending money, electricity, to run these fans, and they're pulling air through the building, which if you have good filtration in there, it wears your filters out faster. You need to service them more often. Not ideal. This solved it fairly effectively. Now we have a fairly even temperature across here. And in addition to that, this redirected the air down and I have it crashing into this foam board right now. I just put these in last night so they're not tuned, they're just kind of like roughed in, but it's working pretty well so I wanted to show you. So the air comes in and crashes into this guy and it gets pushed up more or less, it kind of swirls around and stuff. And what this does is it allows this temperature controller over here to have control over the path length that the air takes. When the fan over there, the exhaust fan is running slower, the air velocity here is lower. And what that means is when it crashes into here, it has less energy and it kind of swirls around rather than getting violently propelled up. And when you have more air getting shoved through these, which are somewhat restrictive, unfortunately, but kind of how it has to be, the higher velocity air crashes into here and still has more energy left, so it kind of swirls up and gets thrown up more violently. And it allows you to control the temperature differential from outside to inside with the fan speed. Now you want to have a higher temperature inside than outside because it lowers the humidity. However, you generally, at least in my area, don't need a large delta when it's hot because usually when it's hot, it's very unlikely to be very high humidity. And if you look right now, the fan's running at the speed of five over there, which is half 85.6 Fahrenheit, 44% humidity and 88 over there. So two three degree differential from outside to in. And when I had it run straight across, it was around five degrees. So it's actually colder up here now than it was when it was running straight across. And we look at this rig over here. These guys are taking a 93. So these are actually slightly warmer than they were before, but that doesn't really matter. I could fiddle with that a little bit, maybe make it better, but these cards for the most part, except for those, they don't really care. In addition to that, the noise from these rigs, the fans and stuff like that, it would leak out. And my neighbor's right behind there, so, you know, not ideal, not super stealthy. Um, the blue lights and stuff like that would leak out. I have a bluish, reddish glow out there. And in heavy rain events, the louvers work pretty well, but they don't stop 100%. And some mist would get sucked in with the air, and it could make it as far as the rigs. Not ideal. And then the event of snow, of course, that's a problem as well. So I knew I needed something like this all along. I was a little undecided on how I was gonna do it, but I decided to run it down here. And that allows me to basically use this open area as ductwork if need be. Like you can see, there's a little opening over there. Believe it or not, that actually works fine. I'm gonna have to tune this a bit, but I just put these in last night, so we'll see. I'll go off data and I'll you know, put temperature sensors all around and we'll see how it works. But I wanted to show you how these guys were working. Maybe to give you some ideas of how you could solve problems in your rig, in your mining assembly. And I'll go on the other side of these so you can hear the noise from inside here that's leaking out. So I'll walk out of the building and we'll go over to the intake side. That's pretty quiet, right? Not a lot of noise, even if I get close. There's a lot of bugs and stuff on here, but yeah, fairly quiet. All right, I'll go in there. I'll take the boxes out and we'll see how it impacts the results. This could be a little difficult one-handed, but you know, right now they're just wedged in. Whoa. 
All right. Um, mm, it's difficult. All right. Yep, bear with me here. Construction in progress. Okay. So you can see this is how it was before, right? I'll leave that other one in there because you'll get the idea. And I'll go around to the other side and we'll listen to the noise that leaks out. It's now getting close. And I go to the other one. So, fairly considerable difference, really. But, I'm pretty happy with the performance. They're working pretty well. It'll take a little bit to get it uh, tuned and all that, to get it refined to the point where it's working perfectly and I'll need to see it in some rainy days. And over the course of the winter, maybe I'll get some snowy days in there as well. But I think this will work. It seems like a pretty decent system. And it wouldn't even be that hard to have some sort of variable system down here that would regulate how much air gets kicked up based on temperature and conditions and stuff like that. I don't think that's necessary. I like the simplicity of this, right? Because this interior volume here fills up more with higher velocity. So when these fans really start cruising, it pushes more air out and that air needs to come in from somewhere. So naturally it gets pulled into these massive openings. And what happens is because this is fairly restrictive by design, this effectively fills up the air naturally since it gets redirected up here it gets redirected just more or less straight down and when it enters this opening here it's coming straight down with a fair bit of energy a fair bit of speed and it kind of just crashes into the bottom and gets pushed out however when you start pulling harder on the other end it forces this air to get pulled out harder and naturally it wants to fill up this cavity more Right, so because there's so much pressure down here, you get lower and lower pressure and the pressure kind of gets pushed up higher. And you can see this with a, like a wind speed meter. But when the fan's running slow, it's really only this bottom bit that is air running out. And you can't really feel it much up here because the air's coming down and it's casually, it's allowed to relieve itself fairly easily. But when you're really pulling the air out, when the fan over there is cruising at high speed, this fills up more and more because the air has a harder time to get out. And that allows you to control with these heights how much air makes it to this rig, how much air makes it to this rig, right? So you effectively have a variable path length of the air, how much of this interior mixes with that exterior incoming air based on the fan speed. So it gives this fan controller the ability, more or less, to regulate the differential fairly effectively, more effective than it was before. Like you can see, here's over the course of the day and the fan speed increased. So if you look at the fan level command, and I was messing with it last night, but here the fan speed increased as the temperature rose inside the building beyond the set point, and you can see the differential went down. Now I opened the door, so it's a little messy there, but what this means is the inside of the building is operating at a closer temperature to the outside of the building when the fan speed goes up, which is exactly what you want. And in addition to that, it's non-linear. Because of the effects over there, as the fan speed goes up, these cards see an even more significant temperature drop than you would expect from over there because more of the outside air makes it to them faster. Rather than mixing more with the interior air and you know all the turbulent flow happening here, it gets forcefully shoved up and that fan pushes it into here more efficiently. So it works pretty well. I'm pretty surprised how easy it was to get this thing dialed in. I just threw foam board down there and it more or less did the business. I'll fiddle with it and tune with it some more. And I was thinking maybe to block these off so air wouldn't bypass the non-hot parts of the rig, but I didn't get around to that yet. I'll give it a try, see how well it works, because I think this will work pretty well. I think it'll control the humidity and all the conditions. I think, generally speaking, you're gonna have the highest humidity when it's cold outside, like at night, and this controller will ensure that I have low fan speed in those conditions, and this assembly should ensure that I have controlled humidity at this point over here. And I don't remember what it was before, but maybe that's hotter now, I think. 
I don't know. Anyways, I'm pretty happy with it. It's working pretty well. I'll keep you updated if things change. But uh, yeah, until then, if you have any ideas of how I could reduce the noise of this exhaust fan assembly, it's not bad, but obviously quieter is better. Can't really think of anything too exciting. It's not really an issue, but eh, prefer to be a little more stealthy if possible. So other than that, until next time, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and stay hashing.